So today we are going to write linear equations of applications. So what I will need you to do is, um, as you need to stop the video to read the problem, please do that. Okay, so the first question talks about going to the gym and deciding upon an equation that describes the cost of the gym. So remember, in when I introduced this chapter, I uh, encouraged you to read the problem through once and then read it again and underline um, what you need to pull out, all right? Secondly, you don't need to try to write the equation right away. Decide what your domain stands for, decide what your range stands for. So what I underlined is that in number one, there's a $20 monthly fee and it's $8 a visit. So what is going to um, be my domain, what's going to be my range. So my domain um, is going to be how many visits that are made monthly. My range is going to be the cost. All right, my independent variable is the number of visits. My range, my dependent variable is the cost. It depends upon the number of visits. All right, it doesn't matter what variables you use. I just make the variables that go with the words. Okay, so what is my equation? Cost is a function of the number of visits. So how many visits, how much does it cost per visit? $8, and no matter what, whether I go zero times or 20 times, my monthly fee just for belonging is $20. So if you look at this equation, eight is the slope, that's the rate of change for every visit you make. $20 is the y-intercept, that's where you start no matter what, your lowest value you're gonna pay is $20 a month. Now, you, I used function notation, you could have said c equals eight v plus 20, you could have said y equals eight x plus 20. Now, the next question asked is, how much will it cost for 11 visits for the month? So, using notation, I said C of 11 equals, that's just a way to ask, all right, I got to know that my domain stands for my visits, so I put in 11 for X or V, so that's 88 plus 20, so it would be $108 per month, or per that for that month for the um 11 visits. Okay, so if you need to stop the video before we do number two, let's do that. Okay, so number two is about um, the cost for mailing a package through FedEx. All right, so I just wrote down what I needed, and there's a $5 fee no matter what I mail, and then it is 75 cents per pound. All right, so what's my domain or independent variable? What's my range or dependent variable? My domain is the weight of it. I made it pounds, so I made it P. My range is the cost. How much is it going to cost? The cost is going to be affected by how much it weighs. So my equation, cost is a function of pounds. All right, now, it's 75 cents per pound, so that is my slope or my rate of change. For every pound, it increases by 75 cents. Now, no matter what, I don't care if I pay mail uh, a package of socks or I mail uh, a big coat, all right, for a gift. Just making that up, I'm going to have to pay $5. All right, so if I were looking at this, this would be my rate of change or my slope. This would be my y-intercept. So now the question is, what will something cost that weighs six pounds to mail? So I'm asking, what is C of six? Or isn't that just a fancy way to say I put in six for X or in this case for P? All right, so 75 cents times six is 450. 450 plus five is 950. So C of six equals 950. All right, or another way to say that is it will be $9.50 to mail the package that weighs six pounds. All right. Go ahead and read question number three about the scuba diver. And again, stop this as you need to. Okay, so everything example I'm giving you is a realistic example of what would demonstrate a um, linear equation. All right, so I personally have never gone scuba diving. I've snorkeled, but scuba diving's, um, you know, when we see, we probably most of us relate to what we've seen in movies, and they go way, way, way down into the ocean using tanks. You have to be trained to do that. 
But anyway, when they are rising to the top, they do not go vertically. They just don't shoot up, all right? They shoot at an angle or they go up what would be a line, all right? If not, it's too much pressure because you're down below. So anyway, a scuba diver rising to get up to the surface is an example of a linear equation. So what do I know is going on? All right, so I underlined 450 feet below sea level um, is where they're starting. So that's like a negative 450 since it's below sea level. Now, this diver is rising at a rate of five feet for every second. So rate, remember we use slope, that's rate of change. So my rate of change is five sixths. So what is my domain? What is my range? All right. So again, I just wrote down what was in the problem, pulled that out. Now I'm deciding on my domain and range. So you get that idea, writing down what you need to use, underlining it, whatever you do. Now decide on your domain and range. Well, the problem actually tells us that isn't the depth a function of time, which is just a way to say that my domain stands for time and my range stands for depth. Does everybody know what depth means? That means deep. So we're looking, when we talk about the depth of somebody in the water, how deep are they? All right, so depth is a function of time. We said our rate of change was five, six, so that's our slope. And they are beginning at 450 feet below sea level. Slope is positive since it's going up. This is negative since um, it's below sea level. Okay, so now the question is, where will the diver be after two minutes? Okay, well, we gotta make sure we're in the correct uh, time. This is five feet for every six seconds. So if I put in two, this would actually mean two seconds. So we have to convert minutes to seconds. So two minutes, there are 60, minutes in a, uh, 60 seconds in a minute, would actually be 120 seconds. All right, so it's just like if you were talking about feet versus inches, okay? If I was describing something in inches, I shouldn't use three feet, all right? If I was using three feet, I would want to use 36 inches. Okay, anyway. All right, so now I'm asking, where will this diver be after two minutes? So D of 120, because that's 120 seconds, so that's just a fancy way to say T is my time, that's my domain, I'm putting 120 in for T. Or we like to always say X is my domain, Y is my range. Variables don't matter. All right, six goes into 120, reduces to 20. Five times 20 is 100, 100 minus 450 is negative 350. So what does that mean? That means that after two minutes, the diver is still 350 below, 350 feet below sea level. All right, I wrote over here, I don't know if you can see that, but a fancy way to write that would be D of 120 equals negative 350. Okay, last one, and we're talking about the descent of a hot air balloon. So if you need to stop the video to read that. So read and underline, I wrote out I wanted to explain to you though, again, this just isn't, not everything makes a line. This is a hot air balloon. And if a hot air balloon is descending the way it should, it should actually descend in a nice linear fashion. All right, so I wrote down that it is 240 feet in the air. So that's a positive number. It is descending at six feet every four minutes. So think about the meaning of slope. That's the rate of change. How is the height of the balloon changing? Since it is descending, it is going down. That's why it is a negative, and I reduce 6 fourths to 3 halves. All right, so that again, I wrote out the information that I underlined in the problem. Now, before I write my equation, I decide on what is my domain, what is my range. So my domain, the problem even told you that the, the height is a function of time, which means that my domain is time and my height is my range. So, um, oh, that should be an H, sorry, H, H, H. So height is a function of time. H of T equals negative three halves T plus 240. Could you have written it as Y equals negative three halves X plus 240? Sure. Now, it asks that after 30 minutes, where is this balloon? Now, balloons do not descend quickly, and they shouldn't, because if they do, there's a problem. All right, so this was six feet over, this was six feet four minutes, 
dropping six feet every four minutes. So I asked, where is this after 30 minutes? So the, the time, the units match up, so that's good. So I'm gonna put in 30 for T, so I have negative three halves times 30 plus 240. Two goes into 30 15 times, negative three times 15 is negative 45. Negative 45 plus 240 is 195. So after 30 minutes, there's still 195 feet in the air. All right, and then a fancy way to write that is H of 30 equals 195. So remember, underline what you need, write out, decide um, what's positive, what's negative, decide on your domain and range, and whatever variables you want to use.